Hi, and welcome to the Perseria part of Desert Treasure 2, also known as the part with the Leviathan boss at the end. This part can be split into two sections, the puzzle section and then the Leviathan boss section. First off, we will need to complete three puzzles. To do these puzzles, we will need a good weapon to kill various demons. You could use an arc light, but you could also simply use a whip with your best strength gear. But you don't need to use melee, you could also simply use a blowpipe with your best range gear. If you think your blowpipe will deal more damage per second than a whip with strength armor. Then also a spec weapon, just for more DPS. And then your best ranged or strength bonus armor, depending on which route you're going. I'm going with melee. For your helmet slot, you will need to have a face mask or a slayer helm equipped during your third puzzle. For the inventory, I'm going to be bringing along one prayer potion for the puzzles, and then also three stamina potions, and then one super combat potion because I'm using melee. You could also swap this for a ranging potion. Then for the teleports, one to Guardians of the Rift, and one to any bank to prepare for the boss fight. And the rest of the inventory I have chosen for some food. You shouldn't need to bring your best food, monkfish should be enough. Now I also choose to have some empty inventory slots. At the start of the quest I think you will need like 5, so I don't really mind eating a monkfish if that time comes. For the leviathan boss we will need to use ranged as well as shadow spells. And for the inventory bring a ranged potion, stamina potion, prayer potion, an emergency teleport and then some good food. And for the final 20%, when you can deal extra damage, you could bring a dark bow with dragon arrows or a blowpipe. More on that just before the boss fight. Let's first start the puzzles. Let's make our way to the Guardians of the Rift. You can simply go there by going to the basement of the Wizard's Tower. And right in front of the entrance, you'll find the Cat Cataclytic Guardian. Let's talk to it and select option 1 to enter the rift. Select option 1 to enter the scar. And once you do, we will need to defeat a bunch of demons. You could use a whip, you could use an arc light, doesn't matter. There are some demons fighting among each other, just wipe them all out. I'm gonna drink a super comet potion already at this part because there are quite a lot of demons. I'm also going to be using Piety during this part. It's not really necessary, it's just to speed this up. Also, if you forgot something or you would like to leave, you could use the big pink purple portal to your west and that will take you straight to Guardians of the Rift. But once you enter the scar again, then the cutscene will start again and all the demons have respawned.
Once you've defeated every abyssal and demonic creature, let's go east and cross the stepping stones. After that, let's go east. Keep going east until you see a transportation sign. Travel with the rowboat, or at least try to, and this will trigger a cutscene. Let's talk to Burston. And after the cutscene is over, we will need to continue this conversation. And after this conversation is over, we will need to enter three puzzle passages, which have three puzzles in every passage. You may not leave the passage until you've completed all three of the puzzles and burnt the ship at the end. If you do teleport away or leave via the exit, then you will need to do all the puzzles over again. The order of the passages is the same for everyone. The first one is the first dungeon sign, the northern one. But the puzzles inside will be random for everyone. So, once you enter the passage, look on your minimap where this will take you. If you spawn southeast, then go to this time frame. If you happen to spawn in the middle of an area, then go to this time frame of the video. If you happen to spawn in the northwestern corner, then go to this time frame of the video. Welcome to the puzzle passage, which starts in the southeastern corner. If this is your third and final puzzle, be sure to wear a face mask or a slayer helm, else you will take constant damage from the smoke. First off, let's run southwest and keep going southwest until you're able to go north. Once you're able to go north, do so, and there will see a gate sign. That is where the first puzzle is. And in this puzzle, we will need to hit some abyssal accents to make them go to their corresponding terminal. Be sure to watch out for the shadows on the ground, else you will take up to 15 damage each. Right, let's enter the passage, stand east of the cosmic accent, and then hit it, then stand north of it, and hit it south. Next, go north, and the next one is a nature one. Stand east of it, and push it west. Then stand north of it and push it south. Then stand east of it again. Push it westward once again. Then go stand in a corner south of it. Push it north. That's that. Next one, the water one. Stand west of it and push it east. Next, go to the wall. Stand north of it. Push it south. Then stand east of it again. And push it westward. And once again, to the next rock, stand north of it, and push south. Next one is the final one, the fire one. Let's stand south of it, and push it north. Next, we will need to stand east of it, and push westward. Next, stand south, push north, then stand east of it, push west again, then stand south of it, push north again, and then we need to stand west of it and push it east. And that is going to be the completion of the first puzzle of this room. Next, once this puzzle is completed, let's exit north and then go west to the transportation sign. Use the Neuron Transporter. And this will be the next room where we'll need to do some room crafting underwater. I suggest you to have six empty inventory slots, so I'm gonna be eating some food because I got hit by some lightning. Let's empty our hands and enter the passage. Then go a little bit north and you'll find an air bubble. Stand close to it, else you'll drown. You'll not die and lose your stuff, but you will simply fail this puzzle. First off, you will see some nerf endings. Let's go east and pick up the air nerf ending as well as the earth one just a bit south and then go back to the air bubble to get some fresh air into our lungs then pick up fire one and the water one just west and go back to the air bubble 
combine air and fire to make smoke. Then go back to the fire, grab an extra one and go back to the air bubble. Next, use this fire nerf with a water nerf to make a steam one. Next up, go a bit north and they'll find a smoke nerf ending. Fix it and then go back to the air bubble. Next up, go east and take an extra air one. Combine this with earth to make dust and then fix the two eastern nerve endings using steam and dust. Afterwards, quickly go north and enter the air bubble. Now there's just one more to go. We will need an earth one just up north and a fire one just southwest. Go back to the air bubble, use fire on earth to make lava and use lava on the lava nerf ending to complete this puzzle. Once that is done, let's continue going east, enter the portal and continue going east. Enter the puzzle room that we've just completed and exit east. From here, go south until you see another transportation sign. Go towards that neural transporter, teleporter, and use it. Then head east to the final puzzle. This one is a quite simple one. Just equip your best in slot armor, use Spidey or Eagle Eye, and kill the imps as fast as possible. Once the four imps have been defeated, all the four demons of Comet 39 in the center will have their protection prayers turned off. Now you can simply kill them. You may ignore the hellhounds and the spawned lesser demons. They are simply trying to distract you. Kill the Comet 39s only. And once done, the puzzle will be completed. Once it's completed, let's exit the way we came from, up north, and then go east. Keep going east and enter the northeastern corner room. Once you are in the final room, let's go to the southwestern corner and there you'll find a crate. Search it for a tinderbox. Then four tiles east of you, they'll find a skeleton. Search it for some gunpowder, I think. Then go to the southeastern corner. They'll find another skeleton. Search it. And then go to the northwestern corner, where you just came from. And near the entrance, they'll find a chest. Open the chest to find a tablet. Read the tablet. Then close the interface and go east. In the center of the shipwreck, click to burn it. And this will be this puzzle passage completed. Once it is completed, you may destroy the old tablet and talk to wizard Preston to unlock the next passage. Once you've spoken to Purston and she will have unlocked the second passage, this will be the most southern uh, passage. Open it and see which puzzle this is, where you will be taken. Welcome to the puzzle passage, where the entrance is in the middle of the area. In my opinion, this is also one of the easier ones. First off, let's go east and there will already find a gate sign. Go towards it. And that is the first puzzle room. Empty our hands. 
And next to the passage, you will find a chest. Search it and you will find some scraps. This is the equivalent of a monkfish, a stamina potion dose, as well as a prayer potion dose. I'm gonna already consume it. Once our hands are empty, let's enter the passage and go to the center of this area. Go to that air bubble. Next to us, we'll find a blue abyssal stem. Once you touch it, four out of eight of the abyssal stems in the area will start glowing. These are random for everyone. If you've forgotten the order, then simply touch the blue abyssal stem again until you have memorized in which order you will need to touch the abyssal growth in. I'm not sure. I'm gonna do it again for the sixth time just to make sure which order I will need to push them. Whenever you're ready, go and touch your first abyssal growth and then stick your head into the nearby air bubble. Then go touch your second abyssal growth and get some more air afterwards. Then touch the third growth, get some more air and then simply touch the final growth to complete this puzzle. Next up, let's go south and play some tower defense. There's not much to it. Use Spidey, use a Super Comet Potion and kill all the incoming Hellhounds and Greater Demons. Be sure to use your special attack weapon as well for some extra DPS. Turn off your prayer, and this is the second puzzle out of three. First off, I want some more scraps, so I'm gonna enter the eastern passage. I'm gonna go to the northeastern corner and search that chest. Once I have this, go back the way you came from. And then go north. Keep going north until you see another transportation sign. Once you've passed the first puzzle room, there you'll find a lesser demon. This one will use magic. So turn on protect from magic and use a teleporter just north of it. From there, go north and there you'll find the gate to the third room. Keep using protect from magic because there are two more magical demons that you need to pass. All right, once we're here, I've already used some run energy and prayer, so I'm going to be using those scarred scraps. And let's enter this puzzle room. In this room, we will find one light leech. Take lure. And now we just need to wait six seconds until the weak light leech will have its uh, illuminating lure back on it. Then take one more lure. If you fail, try again. And now we just need to wait six more seconds. While waiting, we could use it on the damaged growth in the southern corner. Take the light again. Then use the next lure on the western one. The order doesn't matter. And next, I'm just going to be waiting until the final one. 
Yes, take the final light. No, don't fail. Take the final light. Take it, damn it. Dude, my thieving sucks. Right, go to the eastern and the northern damaged growth and repair the final two. And what we will now need to do is kill three Crimson Sanguinis the Sphera. Use any weapon to your liking. Also, use Protect from Magic when doing so. Once you've killed three Crimson Singles, you'll be able to fix these Crimson Veins. Simply click on the parts where they are damaged to fix them up. And you might have already guessed it, we simply need to do that over again, but uh, with the Radiant ones. Use Protect from Magic and kill three Radiant uh, Sanguis Sphera. And use the Radiant Goo stuff fiber and fix up that vein as well. Where is the final hole? There in the corner. And once we've done this, that is already this passage of puzzles completed. Let's exit the way we came from, just south. Let's go south, back to the portal, and use Protect from Magic on our way there. Use the Neural Transporter, Teleporter. Once we're here, let's simply go east to the final room. Next to your north, they'll find a skeleton. Search it for a key. Go to the northeastern corner and they'll find a crate. Search it for a tinderbox. And then go to the southeastern corner and they'll find a skeleton next to the wall. Search that one for some gunpowder. Just three, four tiles northwest from you, there's a chest. Search it for an old tablet, open it and close it, then go a bit northeast and you'll find a shipwreck that you can burn. Do so to complete this puzzle passage. Next up, destroy the damn tablet and talk to Purston to unlock the next passage. The third passage is the middle one. Enter that passage and be sure to have equipped your face mask or a Slayer Helm when doing so. So, welcome to the passage which starts in the northwestern corner. First off, let's start using Protect from Missiles and run east. Keep running east and just south on the minimap you'll find a gate sign. There is the entrance to the first puzzle. Once you've made a U-turn, you may stop using Protect from Missiles. In this room, it is filled with cerebral pathfinders. You can stand on these tiles next to them, but if you happen to misclick and stand next to them, they will take damage, the puzzle will reset, and you will have to do everything over again. The goal is to make our way to the southeastern corner. So first off, let's stand north of the first cerebral pathfinder and then move it. Then follow the pathfinder going south until the first one, which is just east. Next one, also push it east. And follow the pathfinder until you're able to stand on the orange one just east. Stand on the eastern side of this orange pathfinder because the orange ones will move the other way you've hit them. I want them to move east, so I'm gonna stand east and then hit them. Once done that, simply walk slowly to the next pathfinder just south. Once we've done that, stand north of the blue one, push it, then quickly go southeast to the next orange pathfinder. We want this one to go south, so let's stand south, move it, and after it has moved 
like two times, we can already go to the southeastern corner, to the Abyssal Tether. Destroy it to stop this electricity stuff. And let's move back to the northwestern corner to go back to the entrance. So let's make a U-turn again. Keep using the predator missiles while passing the demons. Once you've reached the entrance, keep going south until you see a teleportation sign. Keep using the predator missiles while passing the demons. Use the neuron teleporter and then follow the path south. Follow this path to the second out of three rooms. Here at the end, you'll find the entrance to the second puzzle. Go inside, and inside you'll find four live leeches. Use protect from melee, and take one lure from every leech. Take the lure, that's number three, where's number four, is hidden in the corner. Next up, in every corner, they'll find a damaged growth. Simply click on all four of them to start lighting up the room. And once the room has been lit, there will be a second part of the puzzle, which is exactly the same as during the Temple of the Eye quest. Here in the center, you'll find six runic energies. Try touching random energies until one whites up. When one does, then try touching another one and see if both of them turn white or not. If not, then touch the original one once again and try another energy until you have two energies that are white. And then keep doing this until all six of the runic energies are lit. And similar to the Temple of the Eye puzzle, this is also random for everyone. Once we've completed this puzzle, that is puzzle 2 out of 3. Let's exit the room the way we came from. And let's run north back to the teleporter. Oh, I also forgot that there were some scraps just north of the teleporter. I forgot to grab that. Right, let's use the teleporter. Then go north and make a U-turn going west. And then just keep following this small alleyway until we've made it to the final puzzle of this passage. Use protect for missiles when you see a demon. Enter it. And in here, you'll find some nerf endings. Let's get some six empty inventory slots. So I'm gonna be using up some scraps six empty inventory slots let's first grab a nerve ending of fire and air use these on each other to make smoke then south i'm gonna be taking mind and east one from water use the mind on water to make blood use blood on smoke to make wrath once I have Wrath, I'm going to take two Mines, just a bit east. Then I take an extra Water, and then one Earth. Use the two Mines on each other to make Soul, then use Water on Earth to make Nature, and Nature on Soul to make Cosmic. Next up, I'm going to use one more Water and Earth to make one additional Nature. And then finally, one more water and fire. Next up, go to the center of this room and you'll find a catalyst. You simply need to use the correct nerve on the correct symbol. And do this until all the demons are defeated. 
I'm not doing Astral because that takes 5 nerfs while all the others takes less than 4. Next up, let's exit the way we came from. Use protect for missiles, go south. And then follow the path going east. To the final room. In this final room, right next to us, we'll find a skeleton. Search it for gunpowder. Then go to the northwestern corner. There I'll find another skeleton. Search that. Then go to the southeastern corner. There I'll find a crate and find a tinderbox. Next up, go north and they'll find a chest. Open the chest, read the tablet, close it, and then go a bit east and burn that shipwreck. And that will be this passage completed. Once this passage is completed, you may destroy the damp tablet, as well as the dinner box, and then talk to wizard person. Once all the three passages and the puzzles are completed, and we have spoken to wizard person, let's go east. And now we are allowed to travel with the rowboat to the Leviathan. He's only level three though. Right, now it is time to defeat this boss. You could teleport to any bank and prepare. You could take the rowboat and go back to the scar and from the scar simply run west to go back to Guardians of the Rift and make your way back to that bank. But first off, I'm gonna recharge my prayer in my house and then I'm gonna use a necklace of passage to make my way back to Guardians of the Rift. And here I'm gonna use the bank. Let us bank and prepare for the boss fight against the Leviathan. Bring ranged weapons and armor only. Bring either full void, and if you don't have that, bring your best ranged strength and accuracy armor. The best main weapon is a rune or a dragon crossbow with enchanted ruby bolts, because the boss has very high hit points. And instead of switching to diamond bolts at lower HP, it is better to use a blowpipe and maybe also bring a dark bow with dragon arrows just to use its special attack. But that's not necessary at all. What is important is to bring runes for a couple of shadow spells. Which one does not matter. I'm using shadow burst because the icon is bigger than blitz and I don't have barrage unlocked. The remaining inventory slots should be good food. As for the teleports, bring one teleportation method to your POH to lure the mysterious stranger into and then immediately teleport straight to Narda and from Narda we can run straight to the ancient vault to put the medallion into the statue. Bring also one additional bank teleport to leave the ancient vault and prepare for the next part of this quest. Once you think you are ready, let's talk to the Cataclytic uh, Guardian. Say yes to go back to the scar. And let's make our way back to the rowboat, taking us to the Leviathan. Good, once we are here at the Leviathan, here just east of us, we'll find some handholds. First off, let's drink a ranging potion, eagle eye, and use handholds. Blue balls are magic attacks, green balls are ranged, and orange balls are melee. Use the correct protection accordingly. The fight will start with the boss using four ranged or mage attacks slowly. Afterwards, 
there will be some flying boulders. At least move away one tile. Then the boss will fire 5 ranged or magic attacks, but one tick faster. After that, some more flying boulders and move at least one tile away. Then there are 6 ranged or mage attacks, also one tick faster. Pray correctly and afterwards some more flying boulders, simply move away at least one tile. After that, there are 8 ranged or mage attacks, once again one tick faster than before. After that, once again some flying boulders, and then once again there will be 8 ranged or mage attacks, but also the introduction of the orange balls which are melee attacks. After that is done, move away one tile, move away one tile and then immediately after cast any shadow spell on the leviathan else the next attack will be another tick faster and you will need to be tick perfect. When the boss is stunned for a couple of seconds, run around to the back and heal up while doing so. You can hit the boss from the back to deal a critical hit, so use your blowpipe or a dark bow spec. Once you've dealt a critical hit, the boss will do a debris or a lightning special. You can read in the chat box which one it is. If it is debris, then you will need to walk and make a line of falling boulders. After the 10th boulder, run behind one boulder to avoid the earthquake attack. If it is the lightning attack, then you will need to run around the boss to avoid getting hit by the lightning. You can heal up and sometimes damage the boss while running around. After one of those two specials are over, the boss is reset and it will start firing slowly mage or range again. Do this until the boss is below 144 HP and then the enraged phase will start. Start using your blowpipe and find the white sphere. This will be circling around the boss. You will need to stay as close as possible to that sphere. This will reduce your incoming damage and also increase your accuracy. If you're following the white sphere, then you could use another dark bow spec if you can. If you cannot keep up with everything like me during the enraged phase, then camp protect from ranged and just simply tank the magic hits. But be sure to keep dealing the final damage. Oh my god! So much went wrong, so much went wrong. On my alt, I caught it from the first attempt in full void. Holy shit, this took me five attempts. Once you have completed your very first Leviathan kill, let's go northeast and go to the shortcut stein. There you'll find some more handholds. Then cross the stepping stone. And here we will find Purston. Let's talk to her. Skip through the dialogue until she disappears. After she disappears, search the debris next to you to find the medallion. Next up, do not teleport immediately. First, let's heal up. But before teleporting to Narda and putting the medallion into the statue, let's first teleport to anywhere else. For example, your house. Then teleport to Narda. Use a statuette to get your run energy back and then run northeast. If you didn't teleport to your house, but teleported immediately to Narda, then you will see a sandwich lady. Do not interact with it, else they will transform into the mysterious figure. Let's make our way back to the ancient vault and use the medallion on the southeastern statue.
and another one bites the dust. I'll see you at the next one. Okay, thanks, bye.